Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. Hey, so welcome everyone. Uh, one more episode of Shunya One. I'm here with my esteemed guests, and once again, this is week number four. I can't believe it's almost a month I that know. we've been doing this, and uh, I'm really loving it. I'm loving uh, feedback I'm getting, and I'm loving having spending time talking to my friends in the ecosystem, and obviously uh, getting some real insights out. So, want to welcome you, my guest today, which is Shubham Rai, very old friend of mine, a super networker. One of the, I would say, uh, I know him for a while when before startups were called startups probably, and we both started our businesses together around the same time. And uh, since then, he's done a bunch of stuff which I really want to talk to uh, you guys about. And obviously, Shubham, we'll get into that. But uh, what he's doing now is also something which is really interesting, and I think it's it fits in really well with what we're trying to do here. Uh, with our podcast and uh, by bringing real stories out from the tech and biz world and with real entrepreneurs out there, yeah. right? Beyond the ones we just read about and the beyond the glitz and glamour we see. Let's so, get into the down and dirty. So yeah, so thanks, thanks Shubham, thanks for being here. Uh, thanks a lot, Sheila, and uh, uh, thanks a lot, Amit, for uh, having me over. Yeah, and yeah. so we have Amit back as well as yeah. always. Yeah, yeah. who's gonna? help round things up <laughs> in the world of tech biz this week and uh, yeah so let's let's get a roll on guys sure, uh, lots go. happening this week obviously i think uh, i think beyond just this week i think what we're going to do is uh, also talk about stuff which is a lot more broader topics about the yeah. startup ecosystem right and i think what we did with raj last week was really fun yes, we was. spoke about angel investing and how crazy it can get and the india usa yeah. uh, market divide and so, the pointlessness of a business plan. Oh, yes. That I think that was something which <laughs> really hit home. So I think Shubham has a lot of stuff to definitely uh, elaborate on about about what happens in the startup ecosystem. In fact, we were just talking about how... Uh, so there's a ton of stuff which happened this week, obviously. Uh, one of the stories was about free charge, right? About, yeah. about what's going to happen to them. What is exactly... How is free charge going to go down in this ongoing deal with snap deal and what is it whatever is happening to snap deal and i mean this entire system and this entire space which over the last two years from its peak and where we saw like the peaks of places like obviously flipkart which is still doing seemingly well but we saw massive crashes like housing yeah. which i want so, to talk about because <laughs> he has some inside dirt on <laughs> uh, to where it is today, it seems like things have just changed overnight. How yeah. how did this happen? How, I mean, what do you think, Shubham? Like just two years ago, housing was a big big guy on the Bombay scene. We, I mean, I was happy at least there's some there's a cool startup out of Bombay. Yeah, that yeah, that was one of the uh, good things. Now about. there's no one. Uh, <laughs> well, come on, Hipcask is a cool startup. Uh, not cool Nods a cool startup. Nods Nods all over the place. Nods <laughs> all over the place. And I'm happy for them. So, uh, how awesomely you guys are growing. But but tell us about it. Tell us what, how have the last two years been and how, like, how uh, through Nod are you seeing the insights even further now? So see, uh, there are basically two parts that I would like to talk about. One is my experience at housing. That will be very interesting content. And I first <laughs> of all want to thank housing for like uh, giving me a 40% jump uh, <laughs> from Flipkart and ensuring that I made some really good friends. <laughs> and uh, I learned for the first, so I was an entrepreneur before. Sheila, we met right, when I was right. doing Rentimental and you were doing uh, Resil Enduring, Tata Indian Hottest startups. Hottest startups. Oh, yeah. Oh, fun fact. Fun fact. <laughs> Me and Shubham were in both in a competition, uh, which probably was one of the first startup competitions. It was only which, startup competition then. And yeah. And yeah. uh, 50 hottest startups of India were selected. Oh, we was were this in the thing in Bangalore? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It ended up in Bangalore. It was in Bombay. This so was 2005 the, or something like that? Seven. 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 Tata, I remember Tata this. Tata NEN. Tata NEN. I remember this. I remember Top 30 this. startups Absolutely. of India. And we were both on it. Okay. Uh, we both ended up in the top 30. Like 30. Top 30. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we come, like, and we, we met a bunch of folks who were... Who are still really good friends. And they you did are, really actually. Well and who are. And this was well. before... 
like flipkart probably just got founded that year i think absolutely absolutely uh, so not none of the there are no biggies on that list right in fact we had like random other people we i remember the, the guy biggies that, were knockery.com and uh, yeah, we uh, remember that like you know me you and a lot of us used to like swarm around sanjeev bikchandani taking his autographs yeah. like 24 year old kids and stuff yeah. like that i remember <laughs> that <laughs> so but yeah that was probably the start of the spark of what became the ecosystem and uh, but it's funny yeah please go yeah ahead. so you know uh, being from the uh, uh, early startup uh, ecosystem running my own startup which failed and what was important was uh, for me to uh, work in the corporate sector and uh, pay my debts like the story right. of uh, literally of pay startup. our debts <laughs> so housing uh, so uh, the investors money was not waste <laughs> 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 they paid in our salaries and you know uh, learned a lot from there so there were a lot of good things there but uh, what i sincerely believe uh, where we lost the plot i'll want to give you an example right so i used to take care of sales for uh, and there was a sales team in housing there right. was supposed to be revenues right without a product so i used to go with my uh, juniors and meet these builders right so the common question that all builders asked is yaar 800 crore rupees uthe hai मुझे दे देता तो मैं चार नया लैंड प्लॉट ले लेता कर क्या रहे हो तुम लोग सो देर वॉज सो द टीम द टॉप मैनेजमेंट आई फील हैड अ ग्रेट विजन इनिशियल ग्रेट प्रोडक्ट वॉज मेड बट देर ह्यूज डिस्पैरिटी बिटवीन डूइंग धंधा एंड मेकिंग अ ग्रेट प्रोडक्ट राइट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वॉट आई बिलीव इज एंड यू नो आई डोट वॉन्ट मीन्स माई वर्ड्स बट आई थिंक दैट एवरी आंदोलन शुड भी हम्बल एंड दर इज अ लॉट ऑफ एरोग फ्लोइंग इन एन अराउंड Right. which led to a lot of internal politics more than anything else because of which housing basically went down right uh, similar companies at that time the same building so supreme business park was like uh, oh yeah that's a s- the graveyard of uh, all uh, all the hover hype soft bank funded startups <laughs> <laughs> yeah supreme business park is this fancy building in pawai okay. uh, funny enough i have visited it when it was being constructed to survey it for rassel and for putting cameras there uh which we never did but but after it started it was like the hotbed for oh if you're a cool pawai valley startup you have to be in that building That's so a, uh, which costed around pawai? 10 to 15 lakhs a month wow. which could be an angel which could be uh raj's ticket size for investing in a startup wow <laughs> that's a rent that you know all the startups uh, yeah uh, it was uh, crazy bad, yeah, bad. so which brings me to the point that specifically uh, at that at that time it was like you know the gurgaon theory suddenly the farmers sold their land to dlf and they had mercedes and they went on killing people right <laughs> right this is exactly what happened with the startups oh, in damn. 2014 and 15. too much money yeah. too much money and uh, nobody to basically no discipline absolutely basically. there was no, no there was no adult supervision so I, you know that's something that i thought was kind of interesting right and that was uh, to me one of the, the uh, one of the problems with something like housing was right because you're dealing with builders as you said right? right so you're dealing with people who are hardcore indian business guys absolutely and i feel like the indian environment is such that it's really not suited for a 21 year old with no experience to go out and do this stuff absolutely you know and i, I that no you disagree yeah i disagree only because i think he can learn the ropes i mean I, he, I think how he, long will he make mistakes so i think it depends on the kind of business if you're a tech if you're a pure tech play I think a 21 year old can absolutely run that business, right? right? But the second you have to deal with the real oh, world. That's why he had guys like him, right? I like to deal with true. the real world. Absolutely, but then uh, so there's a solution. Then guys who are brilliant and the top management was, right? And uh, you know, there's no doubt about that. Have to respect guys who are not like them. Ah. and listen to them right that's the reason guys like us are hired right, right. so the whole thing is um, learning for me when i started nord so housing and flipkart taught me a lot and i thank right. a lot to them right flipkart taught me what to do and housing taught me what not to do <laughs> <laughs> so, very nice but yeah. the whole idea is then it is very important to take partners and founders or the top management who complement your skills right okay yeah. and complete you for the benefit of the organization so right. you should be your organization your venture or and your vision should not you know uh, you should not be bigger than your vision or your organization right. and to fulfill that you have to respect people whom you obviously, get on board obviously that was not ha- happening in most of the startups and uh, housing is just one case in point so you think is that you think i mean just to pull back to mm-hmm. the story we're talking about like is that what happened at snapdeal too because i do know some stuff right i know some stuff on uh, especially this right especially the 
free charge transition right. into snapdeal and hence and then the whole boat now sort of sinking uh i do know snapdeal obviously was overfunded at some point mm-hmm. right and even they burnt through a bunch right. of money but right. like any other e-commerce site they all burnt through money that's what you have to do but at the same time i think there was a mismatch of cultures i think when the free charge team moved into snapdeal mm-hmm. there was a big cultural uh, shift in from being a frugal payments company to like you know being Doing, oh, oh no we, we are yeah, yeah we are we are, we are a snap deal and we we do things this way and you right. know like i i do know like uh, anecdotally uh, some friends of mine and others who i've heard this from have said that their costs of running free charge and salaries just everyone got a bump right. just because of the acquisition and hmm. but with no real change in in, 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 in value right. creation right right so, so i tend to disagree a little bit i think that as an entrepreneur right. kunal and his team did what was good for uh, free charge right at the end oh, of the I day they free did. charge guys got their exit in a way yes they did right so uh, it's um, smart entrepreneurship right it is snap deal which was uh, so no that's what as an entrepreneur snap deal is if, who's right if somebody sinking. is uh, ready to give me 30 bucks where i'm only worth 5 I'll right. take it. Right. Yeah, of course. Why, why won't I? So for his company, he did a great job. Correct. No, no, I think Kunal did really well in this. I think the issue is, as you said, Snapdeal has kind of... What they've done with this is... is I mean, like they've, free they've char- played it wrong. You know, and the feel. potential for free charge, right? Free charge has just as much potential as Paytm in some ways, right? right. Paytm, before demonetization happened, was in serious trouble, right? right. Because of... The, no, they were burning. They, yeah, I mean, they, they only had Uber, to yeah, be honest. Exactly. Uber was their only thing. And uh, the uh, with the UPI payment interface coming in place, I mean, like, people were talking about, will Paytm survive before right. demon happened, Right. right. Snap, uh, free charge had a similar issue, but they were at the same time. Uh, sure. they, they were, they were the same. They were, Paytm was the leader, but it wasn't like free charge was that far behind them right. in the wallet business, right? right. right. So th- what's happened is that essentially, and again, I'm basing this based on the article that came out in the Ken, uh, right. yesterday. Uh, but what happened was that basically the value that could have been created through a payments platform that would compete with Paytm has been kind of destroyed. Because SoftBank is playing games with who they're investing in, how they're right. investing it, and I think, and I that's where the housing story we bring back the conversation to you, sure. uh, Shubham, is I think, I think housing just got the rug pulled out from under them with uh, housing, right? And since then they've been uh, they've I, been a much more aggressive investor in a weird way with the housing portfolio. I, think I, think I slightly, slightly uh, disagree, right? So if you see, um, you know, even uh, Ola has big investors. Right. Mm-hmm. Ola might have cash flow issues or whatever. They have actually gone in and created a market share for themselves. Of course. Right? Which housing didn't. Right. By claiming that there was 99 acres at that point of time, there was an India property who were running good businesses, right. but they had not innovated. Right. Right. That was their claim. They're not able to even penetrate their market share. Right. After yeah. raising 800 crores. Right. So, you know, uh, we can't say it was only an investor issue. Right. right. No, I, mean, I think, I think... It was an eye opener for SoftBank. The rug region. was not pulled out, you know, below them by somebody else, but it was by themselves. No, but there I was think a lot of infighting happening. There was a lot of mismatch between, uh, you know, reality and uh, what they wanted to do. Disillusionment. Yeah. But I think your point is simply that, right? That SoftBank saw that happening, yeah. and when they saw the drama occurring at housing, that uh, okay, we need to pay a lot more attention to what's going on in India. Yeah, to the other portfolio, to the, right? to the portfolio where... at large, and I think that's what's kind of caused a lot of this. Yeah. I mean, again, just to recap from again what I read on the can, what happens is that. Uh, when free charge went to snap deal at that point in time uh snap deal's main investor is softbank and right. softbank is also an investor in paytm and because of that they are not giving free charge the legs it needs right right so i mean like if that's the case that means that we've had a lot of value destroyed in this country. absolutely i think a bigger and larger solution to this is that uh, our ecosystem has a dearth of our own uh, investors we have a lot of japanese and american money right. coming in right with their own styles right right which is may or may not be suited to a lot of businesses in this startup ecosystem in India. What right. India needs is our own investors yeah. and investors who are not bankers, but who have been entrepreneurs themselves. Right. We don't have a dearth of them. Of, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, so as yeah, a part of the yeah. ecosystem, there should be conscious effort in making sure that this gets developed right. rather than like, you know, because 
be it a Korean fund or a Japanese fund or anybody, uh, people running them are not really entrepreneurs. Right. Nikesh Arora was not an entrepreneur. He was in Google in the Valley. Right. And now he was running the show with that Lala who makes 600 crores by building four buildings near Panvel by grabbing the land out of showing a false Satbara. Uh, okay, the wow, builder. That's a crazy <laughs> analogy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. He's not going to understand them. No, right. yeah, absolutely true. Or they have to hire some other juniors or some other people who help them understand it. So right? I think uh, there are a few uh, funds in India that do a good job with this kind of thing. Like Matrix does a good job with this. Lightbox does a good job. Matrix is, I think, right. uh, Ola Investor. But they're still learning. I would say they have some good wins. Right. Uh, but they're still not as No, no, no. So everybody is learning in that sense, right? But what I think the uh, the difference is like, so as you said, these are people who have worked in India, right? I mean, right. like the guys who run these funds in India, they're people who know the Indian market. Sandeep Murthy at Lightbox, Rishi Navani who was at Matrix. Now I think of uh, Avnish is the managing partner there. Right. But these guys know this country. They know what's what. Now they raise money from elsewhere. Absolutely. Right? So their funds come from elsewhere, but they run the funds. Correct. So I mean, like that I think is kind of the way that this could kind of work, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You you need people like this. You need people who do understand the Indian right. way that things work over we, here. Uh, Amit, we are, definitely uh, we need these people, but we also need a lot of conventional businessmen coming in. So somebody who has done a kapada ka business and right. earned 1,000 crores. Right. We need such people also coming in because… To put money in, yes, absolutely. Yeah, because money they in, in, And to guide people. Mm. Right. right. They right. have insight right. which is not… Which even a… Avnish can't have, maybe. Right. You yeah, know? not like, sure. Fair enough. Absolutely. Uh, and especially if they're trying to guide entrepreneurs who are building businesses catering to that kind of a market yeah. like if a builder market right a builder market is this uniquely i think the indian builder market is definitely is a very unique yeah absolutely right i mean and you've dealt with a bunch of them so absolutely are, so have i One actually very and I funny know story very okay and uh, you know how does uh, softbank uh, i mean how the hell can a softbank or a guy like nikesh even predict that this will ever happen right is that one of my colleagues uh, i was in west and one of my colleagues in uh, delhi went and sold something to a gurgaon builder okay and committed a product uh, with a four week timeline and it took us eight weeks the builder got him picked up, kidnapped him, wow. put him in uh, one of the Gurgaon safe houses <laughs> <laughs> okay, and said, Mira check wapas de, warna mein chodun gali. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now this is reality, man. Yeah, it is. But this <laughs> is, but but no one spoke about this. No, but this is the reality this of doing business in India, right? I mean, like you have to, you bump up against all this kind of stuff, right? I mean, like uh, whether it is uh, this kind of shady behavior from people who you are trying to partner with or whether Absolutely. it is, uh, I mean, there are so many of these, uh, like, you know, I mean, like just our normal standard sales tax and all that kind of nonsense, right? I yeah. mean, like, you know, I mean, like we got to be bump against all of this stuff constantly. Oh, right? yeah. And that that's again why I feel like, you know, Indian <laughs> entrepreneurs are needed to run Indian businesses. Right. Indian investors as well. Yeah, like absolutely. Saying. Absolutely. But, but that's, it's, it's crazy that we still are seeing so much of the story unfolding and crashing like that. I think that's the sad part, right? This whole, uh, the fact that so much value on paper gets created yep. and then gets destroyed so easily is something which is a little destabilizing, especially for people who are up and coming. I think yeah. I think that's right, what... Right, but then see, um, uh, there is one thing about media. I mean, it's not only about the startup news, any news. Right. We, any news we, yeah. we, we focus on negative we, news because it sells yeah. more. Right. We can also talk about successes like a fresh desk or a Zoho. Yeah. Of course. Okay, of uh, course. who have been Absolutely. doing really well. Yeah. Of course, okay, yeah. With funding or with no funding. The difference is that they are solving real problems and they have been humble enough to change their models. Just right. Dial, for example, yeah. it went right. an IPO, it went through a bad phase in the last one year, but it's now coming back. Right. Right. Nokri, which, uh, uh, InfoEdge, which was one of the best startups in India, right. it did really well, did it for, uh, with Scratch, went for an IPO, had a lean phase, and now it's innovating and coming back. Right. No, right. That, that's the cost of, that's how you do business. Yeah. That's You keep innovating, changing with the times, or else you will get uh, eroded out. But, on the merit of your business and your tactics, yes, I agree that and that will happen across whatever sector. But on the basis of just this hype and this investing cycle, the way things move, it's just crazy. And I think the, the feature story is an unfortunate, it features is like an unfortunate accident byproduct of uh, Snapdeal's way of handling this and maybe SoftBank's way of handling this and I, we'll yet to see how it actually we'll see, ends yeah, up. We'll see how it ends up. But, yeah, I mean, but, uh, but bringing, bringing back to the stuff you did say, right? There are still things which all of the startups 
we all are doing are actually things which have not been done before a lot of them are things which have not been done in any form before shira so i right? want to uh, share my uh, thesis on what you've just said right. okay and i strongly like uh, believe in this thesis so there are three kinds of uh, businessmen right and these three dnas are very different okay so first is uh, opportunistic businessmen mm-hmm. so that could be your ambani's your rockefellers i mean 90% of world's businesses are basically built on opportunities right but the dna there is cash flow profitability the dna is very different to run those businesses right second is problem solve- solvers right uh, people like you shila right i hope so yeah <laughs> but yeah we think problem first yeah, yeah absolutely the dna is very different and cash flows are a by product oh, correct mm-hmm. right so dna is very different right third is business why we are all here so yeah. poor <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and the third kind of uh, uh, businesses businesses run on passion Right. It's the most difficult because most people really don't understand their passion because it requires a hell amount of self-awareness. Right. Most people in the world are not self-aware. It takes a lot of experience to basically be really self-aware that what are you passionate about. Right. There the DNA is very different. You don't look at a problem. You are really passionate about food. There might be five thousand restaurants in your area, but you're passionate about it. You go and run it. You might still be on number one. Right. right. And the profitability comes, uh, you know, next. Now the problems. Now the real problem is that most startup and entrepreneurs, they want to be all three. <laughs> right. And yeah. once you decide what are you, you'll do really well. So if you're opportunistic, you be opportunistic and do the business. And there's nothing right or wrong. Right. See, we've also seen, and I didn't like this, and I will be very honest and tell you this. So, my own CEO Rahul uh, Yadav, when I was in housing, used to go and call brick brats to like you know Mr. Sikka of Infosys right. and stuff like that. That you're not innovating, boss. You have to respect people for what they do. Correct. Right. And Correct. The, their kind of business is different, and they're good at. They do good body shopping. They've been doing it for 20 years. They've created value for so many investors and the stock market. Right. Hats off to them. You want to innovate? You innovate. Yeah. Right, yeah. you are different, and right. they are different. Right, they know how to do danda their way. Right. So, for example, I sincerely believe that uh, you know very good businesses which are conventional, like Biani's, have mm. not been successful at e-commerce. Correct. Right. Yeah. But they know how to do their business. Correct. Yeah. And they right. know they know the data, they know the insights, they they track what they need to track. Absolutely. So right. they need not try to do e-commerce for right. the heck of it, and e-commerce need not try to do what they. Want to right. do? You solve your problems Correct. and know your DNA and stick to it. Right, and and solve within those parameters. Right, like yeah, they, the, the struggle. They, I'm sure they all have each of these three lines of thought have their own. Uh, you would say mm-hmm. challenges, right? But the most important thing here, Sheila and Amit, is that uh, you have to stick to one. Yeah. See, yeah. if you're passionate, opportunities will come. Right. But your DNA is not opportunity. Your DNA is passion. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. get what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. People, most of startups fail because they want to do all three. Right. No. Very interesting point. I, no, I like it. I think that I, I can see that from. I, I I can agree with that formulation. That makes yeah. a lot of sense to me. Right. I mean, like, yeah. I think we firmly come down in the second part of things. Right. I Both mean, of like, you. Yeah. I come in the third part. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. No. But but. Like you said, right? What uh, you're I've doing done is all three. I've done all three. Right. I failed in the first one. I failed in the second one, which was problem solving. Uh, right. Rentimental dot com. Right. And Nord is a figment of my passion. I love networking. Right. right. Everybody was telling me, "Ki boss, fintech or IoT me paisa milega, funding milega. Tere ko funding nahi milega. <laughs> there's already LinkedIn and there is already Facebook and there is already Meetup. How are you going to do it? I didn't care about it because it was my passion. I didn't know how will I raise funds. Right. I didn't know what are the problems which I'll solve. Right. I knew I'm passionate about it, and I can do a better job. And I started it, and we're doing fairly well. Right. Yeah. Right. And there are others as well. So, for example, if you say a Kareem's, okay, mm-hmm. which is now private equity funding, or Moti Mahal, which is a private equity funding, right? Mm-hmm. They're all passionate business. I mean, yeah. that chef yeah. really wanted to make good food. Right. And he didn't think about funding. They started in fifties. Now they're private equity funded companies. Right. Right. No. Yeah, yeah. So all these things come. Correct, and, and all of this in the face of like again, we were talking earlier about food tech, right? Right. Food yeah. tech. There are still so many food tech things happening in the world. Right. Some which are actually food tech, and some which are just slopped together yeah. in the same category because. Yeah, I think like, but some <laughs> of the stuff is really interesting, right? I mean, like, so uh, as part of that, uh, the Internet Trends report that Mary Meeker came out with. Uh, in the last year, the percentage of revenue that restaurants have from delivery has jumped from two percent to seven percent. Yeah. That's a wow. trend, right? That's wow. a ridiculous number, man. That's a trend. And that means what? That means, a, first of all, that means it's also accumulation of more restaurants, like you said. Yeah. There are always more restaurants. We're all Bombay people. We know 
there's a restaurant opening every week Absolutely. almost much, right yes, and that yes. to the that to the known ones i'm sure there are Small, unknown ones which, which are, open every week right. which five of them open every yeah, week yeah i'm sure like passion out of passion or opportunity you never know so I've some guy must have data on that do yeah. biryani is killing it here <laughs> Or there's no one doing biryani. I would like to area. give you an opportunity, right? So, for example, uh, you, we all know about BBC, Borivali Biryani Company. Wow, I don't know. I okay. don't know either. I am so sorry. <laughs> I don't know Borivali Biryani is, Company. Okay, so there was no biryani, could be any in Borivali because it was a predominantly Gujarati area. Uh huh. The guy started it. Now he has chain. He has a chain, totally bootstrapped, and they do more than ten crores a month. Wow. There are private private equity companies interested in them. Wow. So That's and it is run by a guju who is vegetarian. Oh my god. <laughs> See? That's insane. Man. So no passion and opportunity. Yeah, no passion. Can, yeah. <laughs> and he did it. Yeah. <laughs> But opportunity. Opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. So he he kept it separate. He didn't even eat biryani ever. <laughs> so <laughs> he might have had veg biryani there, right. but and it's a very different kind of biryani. So there are more than when. So it turned into a passion later because he got deep into it after right. realizing the opportunity. There's some one thirty kinds of uh, biryani is available, which are actually there in India. There is a Hyderabadi biryani. There's a Lucknowi biryani. Yeah, yeah, of course. There's a yeah. Telangana right, biryani. Right, right. So he got deep into it and he killed it. Wow, that's impressive as hell, man. Wow, it really is. No, so no wonder, right? When you see that trend and when you see that when you see that data point, right. it shows so many things. It shows our consumer population is like in especially urban areas mm-hmm. is increasing. Yeah, more and more people need food on a regular basis and they're ordering. Yeah, they're choosing to, or probably they were. I don't know if they were cooking before, but at least they're coming into the ordering bracket. People mm-hmm. who just start jobs, yeah. people who just move into the city, yeah. bachelors. That Shira, entire segment is growing, and restaurants are growing, and the concept around. Shira, apps. When, uh, when yeah. we talk about food tech, I think uh, you know the mistake that we make is we talk about only the urban population. There right. are enough food tech problems in tier two cities and tier three cities. Wow, actually, yeah. yeah. Right. So if you see, India is one of the largest producers of certain food grains, mm-hmm. but we still have not eradicated uh, wastage. Food waste. Food wastage. Right. So if you remember, Sheila, there was a very wonderful startup. I don't know what happened to them called Star Agri. Yeah. Right. Now that yeah. is a kind of food tech that you need to solve because yeah. distribution of food is a huge problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we could actually have affordable pricing because a lot of food, as you mentioned, get wasted. Yeah. Right. There are only government-run FCI warehouses. Star Agri made a huge difference and they did really well. Right. Right. That is one problem to solve. There's a problem of uh, you know food and logistics put together of cold chain. Right. Yeah. Right. A lot of food gets wasted there. Now, a lot of technology can be used there. Why only we talk about things in the urban area and think you know uh, you know technology can solve so many other problems. Right. Right. There is a huge problem of soil management. That's a huge tech problem to solve. Right. Mm-hmm. We have the most fertile land. Okay. And we have different types of soil and different types. Of, we all read about this in geography yes, when we were kids. How can right? there be hunger and they beggars? Can in you <laughs> and, yeah. How can there be hunger and hunger and beggars in India? I mean, it is very shameful that we invented basmati, but it's called taksamati, which is just patented. Wow! By yeah. a, uh, it is you know yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by rice tech based out of Texas. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's so much to do in food tech beyond just aggregators and restaurants. That's true. That's right. true. Right. There should be more startups in food tech coming out from the Rice Institute based out of Hyderabad rather than entrepreneurs coming out of IIT and IIMs. That's true. That's right. True. No, no. So yeah, again, yeah, right? The, the problem solvers need to look in the right places for, for solving those problems. Right. Absolutely. And then hopefully, no, uh, I, I, so I, they'll also have I passion think, about uh, it. One of the things, like I mean, uh, is. Uh, Entrepreneurship as a thing, right, is encouraged a lot in the IITs and IIMs and the tech space of things. I don't know that it's encouraged so much in other streams. No, so that's that's where it's. I think, and that I think is the. Uh, so that's why. I that's why this whole that you do. Uh, I disagree that it is even encouraged in IITs and IIMs. There is a natural thing that happens that uh-huh. uh, what gets encouraged is that boss, when you get out of this, in any case, get a job. Right. So you have a fallback option. Right. right. So now you can do what the hell you want. and entrepreneurship and startups became a fashion that they started doing it is not real entrepreneurship that is actually promoted there i think real entrepreneurship is promoted in communities in india the marwadi community the gujju community the sindhi community and the punjabi community that's true and then there are problem solvers who genuinely come and do 
ITs and IIMs don't encourage entrepreneurship as such. It is a fashion which has become. So, Sheila, when we started it, right. we started it for two reasons. And let's be honest. One is we really wanted to solve certain problems right. that we are interested in. Second is we wanted the fame because we were influenced by the West. Correct. Yeah, yeah. We started. We, we didn't want to. We didn't want to do so, a job. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly my thing. Let's be honest. And yeah. both of you, both of us, are not from an IIT or an IIM. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, in fact, in the top 30 uh, Tatani and Hottest Startup thing, there were hardly four of them. Hardly, four. yeah. Actually, there weren't Yogi so wasn't. Uh, Orvind was. I mean, okay. Yeah, but then the whole idea is when you count it, we weren't, right? Right. The reasons were pretty natural, which were personality-based, not institute-based. Yeah. And right. then later when it started becoming a fashion, they just had a fallback option. In right. other institutes, Samit, what happens is that people have insecurity. India yeah. is a very insecure country. Yeah, no, Absolutely. Even education system, unfortunately, in India works on where will I get my placement from. I agree. That's and that's the reason it's kind of become like a scam. Right. So people will show, right. you know, somebody got, gets a 20,000 bucks job. Like it, like the IIPM scam that we all know about. Wow. <laughs> know. Oh, that's, that's, that can hey, be a whole different yeah, let's chapter. Talk about that. I <laughs> that don't want to get sued by some judge in That Nagaland, can be a whole man. different chapter. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, <laughs> in fact on, that, on that note, I think we'll just take a quick break and come back. Well, wow, this is already <laughs> off to a fascinating start. What's the best new restaurant in town? Which bar sucked? What's the worst new Hindi film? What's the most obscure thing to do on the weekend? And what's the most interesting new walking tour? If you want to know how to make the most of Bombay, listen to the podcast by thedailypow.com. We are Pranuti, Amit and Purva. We're your guide to what to do, see and eat in the city. You can find new episodes of the podcast every Monday on the IVM podcast app or any other podcasting app that you prefer and on thedailypow.com. Okay, uh, welcome back, guys. Uh, I think I think we could just uh, go all day just looking at the Internet Trends report which came out this week, and mm-hmm. there's so much, uh, so much which we all can debate about on it, as well as so much which we just can't make our heads around. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously we know, like, uh, so one of the stats is smartphone growth is slowing from near sixty percent to now like twelve percent. So obviously we are we reached peak smartphone in the country at some point. But it's still such a big number that obviously we know uh, it, it's still a huge market. It's, it's, right. it's Google Play's biggest market. Yeah, right? yeah, that that was surprising to me, right? Yeah. I mean, like, you think about it a couple of seconds and yeah, it makes sense. But it was really surprising to me that we have more downloads on Google Play Store from India than anywhere else. And what apps do they download? UC Browser. UC Browser, which I don't understand. UC Browser. Have you used UC Browser? Uh, I've heard about it. I may have used uh, used it because if it's forty percent of Indian population, yeah. I might fall somewhere, and I might have used it without even knowing about but it. But it's crazy, right? It's These the are things. Most popular app in India. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. And after all the usual suspects, which is what True WhatsApp Color, WhatsApp, and WhatsApp, Facebook, and Facebook Lite, and Facebook Messenger, yeah. <laughs> and Instagram, and all the other Facebook. But UC Browser, UC Browser is uh, <laughs> just another browser. Yeah. But you know what I think, what little I know, I think which, why they've killed it is, it is actually super light. I, I Absolutely. Think and there is one more important thing that I know uh-huh. about UC Browser is that the battery consumption is pretty low. Exactly. Okay. And that well, helps a lot. Also, so, do, don't they do the same thing like Opera used to do where they have, where, where they do a man in the middle and then just send you... Yeah, more, they cache. Yeah, they, they, they send you uh, smaller like sub pages. Yeah. Right? yeah not, not, not your fully rendered pages. Yeah. So mistaken. especially on low memory Android phones yeah. and we know Android phones have been sucky for a long time, yes. right? Over the last four years of Android phones, mm-hmm. none of them have been really good. The, after, like, after the fourth app, I think they all start like squeaking. I'm pretty happy with but, my Moto. But listen, you're talking Moto, right? Yeah. Most of India, forty. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. No, most okay. of India is not Moto. Most of India is Micro Max or okay, someone fair else, enough, fair enough. I'm not or argue Samsung about that. or whatever. And yeah, they have, I think an amalgamation of uh, Micro Max, Lava, 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 right? And all the other and guys, all the new Chinese guys. And uh, they have like what? They have like I like use 20, a Lenovo P2, right? Right, and the battery consumption. Is the lowest. Like my phone uh, is charged for two days. Yes. Oh, you got one of those the, the ten hours. Uh, Five thousand one hundred. Yeah. Uh, and and see, that's Absolute like a break. Yeah. Uh, right. But the point being, I and I've seen this with whoever I've seen doing a lot using smartphones across the strata of mm. people I interact with, and there still are a ton of those older, low memory, yeah, small yeah. screen. Uh, 
shitty phones. I mean, uh, with, with why the, do you think a Samsung has probably what a hundred models? I mean, I'm talking about the I, I lowest like of the low. A right? lot of the phones also. I mean, like their screens are weird, right? It's, the, it's like it feels capacitive, even though I'm guessing it's not. It's multi-touch, but it still feels like they're capacitive touch for touch. Yeah. Things. So and they anyway are probably running an older version of Android too. So yeah, probably you see browsers. They really saw again, right? When we were you were just talking about how real problems in India. While we say India is an awesome mobile market, these are still real problems. I mean, till this January or till I would say, yeah, till whatever the Geo launch, right? Uh, data was still a big problem, and I would still say it is in tier two and three. What do you think? So, like, no, it, it is a problem, but I think uh, Reliance Geo is trying to solve that problem. Correct, but well. but at least still. Maybe this time last year, you still used to think that, oh, wait, if I'm going to make an app for farmers, you know, I can't assume they have 3G. I need to make it SMS-based. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I can't even assume they have data. Yeah. So, so Sheila, a lot of people were riding on the feature phone market, right. uh, which includes a company called VSurf. So, right. if you remember, there was uh, in Mobi and there was, uh, you know, uh, Google's own uh, ad network. Right. Mm-hmm. And we have started saying that feature phone market in India won't degrow. And we will do ads on feature phone, uh, the like feature phone market. Basically, SMS, basically. Absolutely. Right. Uh, or Flash SMS or absolutely. whatever. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. uh, on the feature phones. Right. From now till then, feature phones have decreased by more than 26%. That is two years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> right. again, why? Yeah. Because because of the people selling the two thousand rupee smartphone, yeah. which runs Android. No, but so actually, it's interesting. The uh, this report that we're talking about, right? Mary Meeker's Internet Trends report. In that, they started talking about feature smartphones. Right. Basically, these Same micro thing. maxes and lavas. Right. And oh yeah, now they're called feature they're smartphones. Feature smartphones. <laughs> because they <laughs> they fill the same gap. <laughs> Uh, Absolutely. They, they go to the same people who... And that's where probably UC people. Browser is making a dent. Uh, we'll have to do a deep study in that. But then uh, when you make a cheap phone, okay, and as uh, Amit talked about uh, capacitors and, you know, they would not be able to use the 9th generation or 10th generation chipsets. Right. right, right yeah, yeah. Which and are, the best components, yeah. Absolutely. So they want something to run on it. Right. Because at the end of the day, the 2000 uh, rupee buyer does not know the chipset, but he knows customer experience. Ki mera phone hang ho hai, ye ho hai, wo Correct. You see, browser probably solved that problem for these guys. I, Correct. Would, I assume that's the case. I mean, but I, it yeah. just... It, it it surprises me, right? I mean, like how, even though we talk about digital divide in this country, right? I mean, like, and, or just generally in the world across, even within the digital, the literate and the people who are using so much, there's still such a divide in terms of how people use this stuff. It's, right. kind, of, it's kind of amazing in that sense. That's true. Actually, in fact, uh, I mean, I wouldn't even expect Mary Meeker to really know what's going on in hinterland India. Yeah. But uh, at least from the data, I think Mary Meeker wouldn't even understand what's happening in hinterland Bombay. Forget <laughs> hinterland India. So. But, but but they have data, right? So yeah. the data is something which no, and actually, for us in the ecosystem we should. So they, uh, you should check out the report though. Actually, uh, the it's a 350 page report out of which 35 pages are dedicated to India. It's yeah. it is like a term sheet, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think we have even read a term sheet before of last Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's S-H-A, not go there. S-H-A. It's like. Uh, uh, you know, someone actually made a joke about this report that oh. in the last five years of Mary Meeker reports, there's been steady upward growth of number of slides. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I would not be so. Yeah. This was someone a marathon, made a graph man. of that. Yeah, I, I went through the whole thing today. It was a goddamn marathon, man. It took me, I, I, it must have taken me like two hours to go through the whole thing. Yeah. Well. I, I mean, like it was, a, but I mean, like, I like doing it. I do it every year. But I mean, like still, it was a, yeah. okay, take yeah. a chunk of time out of your day and go through it. What you should do, Amit, is uh, there's a very interesting startup called Scribe. Yeah, Scribe. Yeah. Scribe. Yeah. Scribe. Scribe. Yeah, it's sort of you know, interesting stuff. Okay. okay. Uh, these 350 page reports, okay, they convert that into voice. Ah. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. They convert that into voice. Nice. Right. You could it's use them. Podcast so yeah, these are the kind of startups which I really like in India. Yeah. Right? They, there's a problem. They've got no funding. They have like a 40 people team. They're doing it manually. They're developing their own technology. Wow. Right. And they're solving a problem. Wow. I mean, it's a very interesting problem to solve actually because yeah, you're right. I mean, there are... We should have them here, Amit. Yeah, like, I should. To speak yeah. about it. I should, yeah. I should. No, no, we're going to have some... I mean, like we were just saying, we can have people to talk about each and every trend listed yeah. on this report sure, yeah, and, we, and we can probably do an R about each yeah. of them but it's an interesting time I think this 
this is again it's going to be spoken about for a while now yeah yeah this but is. if we have to look at it as the rest of the year which is coming uh, and startups which are going to come or people how existing guys how they're going to pivot or innovate uh, looking at data like this i think that's that's what we have to no, that, and that's, that's the reason to read this right i mean right. like there's a lot of insight in this right i mean like for example how the penetration for the indian market is now at 27% internet penetration which is a pretty good number i mean like compared to where it was yeah way, way way back when yeah. absolutely but also i mean i was i was looking at uh, more numbers like this uh, and Shira, i know so when me and you started it was 4% Yeah, <laughs> that is just 2007. When just I started, back. it was three and a half lakh users. Wow, net in internet, net in India. And now we are what three hundred fifty million. We are three hundred fifty million now. Wow, <laughs> it's how many times a uh, lot of that? A is, lot of times that. A lot of times. Yeah. No, so I think uh, there's there's more fun, obvious data here, like. the smartphone purchases always spike in q3 which is diwali diwali yeah that i thought was interesting so, as well right i mean like uh, i think it's the easiest gift to give someone yeah i mean every year <laughs> i think people who can afford smartphones have been giving a smartphone to more and more of their extended family it used to be spouse and children then now it became one degree further <laughs> one degree for now you're probably buying this year you probably buy smartphones for your like aunts and uncles and the people who are not yet like the generations going older older and older no, right so i've seen a lot of rich marwadi businessmen buying lavas and you know lenovo's for their drivers yeah, 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 yeah exactly that right happens. that's what so that that, that, that has that been happens. one of the that, you don't even have to be particularly trade. rich for that to happen yeah, i mean like you know i mean a lot of people just it's a good way to do a diwali bonus right absolutely. yeah absolutely. and uh, yeah no so that's helped this trend i think that's i think i know i think it is and but i mean like, what i find interesting about it is uh, All of our festivals come in this time, right? Ah, and so, all the major ones, yeah, yeah. So I mean, like you know, just the the amount of consumer spending in India is always going to have this kind of spike, right? And I think we gotta, uh, which I guess people do account for Absolutely. it. But I mean, like you know, it is something that we gotta think about even in our businesses, right? If people are, how does this impact? And I I, I think about it for myself, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's very interesting for me to know because what that means is that. That should be my biggest quarter too. Absolutely, you know. Good. It is so. Yeah. Uh, so you know, O and D in the corporate sector, October, November, December right. is the biggest quarter for anything. Right. 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 From cars to soap to everything. Right. 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 So India is very seasonal, and uh, uh, so obviously uh, Diwali is uh, number one, and then after that it is regional things. So mm. Ganpati becomes very important in Maharashtra, Mara, right, and, yeah. and people need to crack that and. you know there are actually companies which crunch data on these things their mm-hmm. market research companies mm-hmm. which are boutique market research companies for corporates and they make shit loads of money on this yeah, well, so, so data is pretty diverse in india that's true i mean we are a bunch of countries pulled together as one i Absolutely. think it, especially if you if, if you there is another problem with startups when they do their planning it is on an excel sheet right right, right. so for example let housing again and it's with right. their lens of what they know at housing Our JFM just because we wanted to see a progression on uh, you know our Excel sheet for the investors. JFM was the biggest quarter. That wow. is uh, Jan Feb March. Jan Feb yeah. March. Yeah. But maximum people buy houses during Diwali. Who and D? Right. <laughs> so then why would you do that? <laughs> No, because it's an Excel it's sheet. An Excel <laughs> sheet. Oh, okay. You can pull the levers however you want on an Excel sheet. Like take the formula and show twenty percent growth and go. Oh, no crap. man, it's not possible. So July, that is June, July, August. It's monsoon. It's monsoon. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's so no real estate business is going to spend on any advertising because they know that nobody's going to come and see. Absolutely. Places. So why will they buy products from housing? Yeah. Right. But we had there. We should have shown a dip. Right. O N D. We should have sh- uh, shown a spike, and J F M should have been balanced. Flat, yeah. Now that is real business sense, and that is grassroots thing. Coming back to why startups fail in India. Right. Mm. Right. It cannot be done on an Excel sheet. It cannot. Uh, right. Well, I mean, like you have to make your Excel sheet comport to reality. Absolutely. Right. No, uh, I mean, so many learnings. I mean, yeah. it's funny that we are sitting here and actually reading data about our own country done by a foreigner. Because we don't. Do this kind of <laughs> this is surprise. Sheila, this is like Texas Mati, right? <laughs> <laughs> you have Basmati that we have been eaten, and then suddenly we know, oh, it's patented in Texas. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, But you know, we don't have great data. Sources over here, right? I mean, like it's tough to get this kind of insight from other Indian stuff that I've seen. I, at least, I mean, like you know, you don't get this much kind. 
kind of uh, this. There's a, there's so much interesting stuff over there, right? I mean, they're talking about how the rates of bandwidth are falling, right? I mean, like how right. Reliance Geo's entry right. has made all of these guys go from three fifty dollars, oh, three dollars fifty cents a database it's, it's to, crazy. Uh, to to down to two dollars a day. Uh, Do you have the secret Vodafone plan which I'm on? I what is your secret Vodafone plan? Oh, there's a super. Let's 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 let on Vodafone. Yeah, so yeah. Let's we tell, all should, right? Let's tell our listeners about the secret so, Vodafone plan. So, so there's a secret <laughs> Vodafone plan which you only get when you threaten to port away from Vodafone. <laughs> ah, <laughs> it's called Super Five Forty Nine. <laughs> what is saying? And it's five hundred forty nine bucks a month. I just paid three thousand bucks to Vodafone last for month. <laughs> unlimited calls and messages throughout. Uh, How and much data? Twenty gigs, dude. Okay. <laughs> and just five forty nine bucks. All right, I gotta call. Well, I gotta call. And you go. Them. You only get it if you call them and say, "Are you gonna give me this, or am I going?" <laughs> and this, this put you on hold. They say, "Let me look at your profile and see if you're eligible." But they're really talking to the manager and saying, "Oh yeah, no, yeah, we are gotta yeah, give yeah, one yeah, more." more <laughs> <laughs> so again, right? So the telecom business, you can't do much. Right? I mean, why right. will you innovate? It is all about licenses yeah. first, like you know, just yeah, keep like like yeah. But but I have some insight on that. I have I know like you were saying, right? Uh, businesses need to innovate. Businesses need to stick to what they know and do the best in that, right? And one of the things I think telecom, while they've just been playing pricing wars all this while, right? Which I have I have started to hear that they are uh, on the back end of their 10 15 years of data they have built mm-hmm. they're actually doing or at least trying to you know analyze it as big data and trying to put in some little bit of like high end anal- ai insights into it like and Absolutely. they can you know Absolutely. and they should shila this like, one more smart thing that they are doing most of the telecom companies in india have re- re- realized the value of content yeah so they are going and buying content companies and content because at the end of the day that's what they'll be able to monetize right 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 so uh, jio uh, from my sources that i know has gone and bought licenses from production companies for yeah, content yeah, for years yeah. no no so jio 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 is doing a multi prong play anyway right? right they went like all out they yeah. were they they have jio wallet which yeah, is a pay- it's in entertainment it's in uh, payments so, so jio obviously is like that but especially the existing telecom guys who are sitting on tons and tons of data i know vodafone so again since we spoke about that i know vodafone's actually there are programs running inside vodafone on their own data which are trying to find out uh, your behavioral tendencies to of of churn like right. like oh what is this guy tweeting to me what has he been his phone conversations with our reps right what kind of tone has he been taking and what's the likelihood of churn like and across millions of subscribers right so this right. is real uh, they have a advantage in terms of at least having a shit they pile do. of data which they if they're smart enough can really make uh, make it work for them absolutely so i think that's where uh, that's again bringing back to the points which in our past podcast we've spoken about data security yeah. and we've spoken about <laughs> how indian startups and uh, a lot of products just don't care about data give security everything yeah so uh, and we just easily so give up on like our sms data and we just upload whatever we just for a freebie so i think i think we've done that inadvertently with uh, with telecom like we no, i don't think there's anything inadvertent so, about it telecoms are they are the people who control the pipe so correct. everything goes through them so they exactly, have it exactly exactly so yeah. if they chose to be evil and yeah. we don't know we so don't i consider know. a bunch of them evil i think mtnl is evil mtnl inserts ads in my web pages wow wow yeah so i mean i think that's just like the very definition of evil right, right. how do you insert an ad on my web page Right, I mean, like I, I'm just surfing a page and randomly MTNL thing <laughs> pops up. And yeah. It's it's yeah. that that's ridiculous, right? That's that right. means you're like essentially none of my data is secure, nothing, right. right? Right. Like nothing that's going through you, I can count on because this means for you to be able to insert an ad means Absolutely. you know what the page is, right? right. So right. if you know what the page is on an HTTPS connection. That's free. How do they know? I, I mean, so uh, that's happening. what happens when a government organization tries to monetize on things, yes. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> so, on things which they don't know about, Absolutely. things which they're Absolutely. not specialists Absolutely. about. I, I, I don't understand. I mean, like, uh, you know, I mean, uh, so this is the thing that drives me crazy, right? I mean, like, we have all these conversations around net neutrality and how 
radically important net neutrality is, but Correct. nobody cares about this stuff. And Correct. this is the much more insidious stuff to me than the net neutrality problems. I understand the importance of net neutrality in some ways. I, I'm not as far on the net neutrality right. uh, spectrum as most techies would right. expect me to be. Right. But I get the importance of some parts of it. But the, this is like, to me, the nastiest thing that an ISP can do. No, no, obviously. And I mean, this is the stuff which if they, if, uh, if people were so vocal about it, yeah. they would get buried for this. Yeah, they could be, but n- then no, we're not cares. because we are still in the age of like enjoying our, oh, 20 GB free data. Yeah, Let me just give it to me. <laughs> just give it to me. I want more video. I want more audio. I want more everything. So Absolutely. yeah, well. That's why that's why this the report numbers are looking yeah. up and to the right because obviously we are still we are still just hungry for more right uh, yeah. our whole population literally with food tech and Sheila but you know <laughs> uh, it will be very interesting to see because uh, when you talk about data right, right we should also see that how and you would be the best person to talk about it things like NFC is uh, developing right 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 so it will be much more than that right so it's not about you know, consumer data that we consume. Mm-hmm. Okay. The transaction data. Transaction info. data yeah. to, you know, so that's going to change the landscape. Yeah. That's, and I mean, to be honest, Paytm also, right? Again, when coming back to Paytm free versus free charge, what they were doing, they were still fighting on price. Absolutely. Or at least visibly they were fighting on price. Right. But, and, and partnerships right. and uh, going to, doing uh, Kirana store payments Absolutely. versus, uh, you know, online recharge and whatnot. Mm. But essentially now Paytm, while they have become leaders and while they're still competing on so many fronts, they also have so much data on you. Yeah. They know exactly when you recharge. They yeah. know, they know, they can predict your entire life. And with now they're also e-commerce and so I, on, right? I use Paytm. Slowly, for, slowly they'll take over, right? Yeah. That's that's been the Alibaba play in Absolutely. China, and so, that's what Paytm so you know, is trying to uh, do. Here. Industry data. So, for example, okay, I know a real problem that's happening. So, uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, Road Corporation, mm-hmm. okay, basically wanted to roll out and solve this problem. They went to every bank. They went to every possible uh, tech company in India, like the biggies. But the problem cannot be solved. And what's the problem? The problem is that they have a lot of these toll readers and tolls right. at remote areas. But it's not working. Right. Because there is no internet. Yeah. So okay. while we talk about geo going to the hinterland, etc. We have a government machinery which is stopped. Because there's no internet. Oh, that, but there's no and this excuse. is not just one toll reader. There's tons of Absolutely. There are bank but branches which only come online huh. for a few hours in a day. Right. Because the the because the, there's no electricity <laughs> for the internet substation. Absolutely. Or that's, something like that. But but yeah, there's so much to be solved. Like again, coming back to the problem solvers, if we all of us look into the hinterland or if we even go to the hinterland we realize there's so much to be done and I I actually do commend Paytm on that because as a vision that's what they want to do as far as payments no, and I think Paytm banking is, is concerned right? Paytm they want to say that okay fine I will you know I'll, you'll have a phone right phone will which has a battery and whatever you may not have network or data for so long you may have sad data but I'll get you a bank. It's like your sure. fundamental lifeline for but see, uh, living, right? I'll get you a bank. Uh, so, Paytm is very visible now. But then, uh, and this is the kind of problems you solve. So, Paytm is solving the larger problem. But we should also appreciate companies like Razorpay. Mm-hmm. Who mm-hmm. solve this. So, Razorpay's user, uh, you know, experience is five hundred times better yeah, than Paytm then, any day. Yeah. And Razorpay has become a boon to startups and small right, businesses. Right, right, right. Right. So, while they focused on scale, these guys focused on the technology. And quality, yeah, yeah. And so for example, Razorpay, Insta Mojo, uh, or, Tiny Owl yeah. versus Swiggy, they're right. doing the same business. Right. But Swiggy solves my real problem. It actually gets me food on time. Right. Most of the time. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Better, and they uh, use a lot of technology. There's Fortigo. Right. For example, yeah. right. Yeah. Now these are the problems when you. So uh, it's not always about scale. That's my point. Right. Sometimes you just focus on the problem, and make a product better. Right. And no, and but again, like you said, the best entrepreneur is the guy who is chooses his path, but he also absolutely. knows the and the other two things come across him. Absolutely. So, so one has to decide the DNA. Yeah, I think if you if 
all of these other guys you spoke about they all are successful also because of scale i mean thankfully because they did a good job with product right they got scale because if they hadn't got scale they wouldn't get funding on the other be- hand uh, uh, not only geo but arcom when arcom started Right. They were successful. Of course. They were of but course. they did not focus on the product, they focused on the scale because that's their DNA. Correct. Jio exactly. is not focusing on any product. I mean, the Jio phone that you get is probably the worst phone ever that, you know, right. uh, you'd get. They focus on scale, they focus on dhanda, they focus on cash flow and they're doing pretty well. Right. 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 They might acquire companies which solve problems for them. Correct. Correct. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you have to have your play and uh, strategy in the game, right? Absolutely. I think that's Absolutely. the... That's the way to do it. Yep. So yeah, so we I think we're going to read into these trends uh, in even the coming weeks, yeah. and uh, like uh, like Shubham said, we'll have a few folks to go deeper. I know there's a big section on just gaming and how gaming is yeah. such a such a big deal. I mean, uh, we should we should talk we should about we, should, that we should. I'm, I'm not I'm not I've not been a gamer yeah. in a while, but I think people can just do one hour on Candy Crush. Yeah. I think it's, it's <laughs> nuts. So I don't, I won't go there now. I won't go there. It'll be a <laughs> no, whole but, uh, new box. Sheila, when the 2000 bust happened, and uh, Amit right. would have uh, seen it like you know uh, more closely than us because we yeah. were college kids. Okay, yeah. one of my seniors told me that bust ho gaya, but there will be three businesses which will never die. Right. Okay. Uh, three online businesses or uh, tech businesses. One is pawn. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. Second is gaming. Right. Okay. And uh, third is Bollywood or Hollywood or whatever. Yeah. Right. Entertainment. 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 Right. Yeah. And this has been the trend. Everything has gone. Oh, yeah. 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 No, so come, I mean, but they've always been there. Gaming is like really fascinating, right? I mean, because like, if you think about it, gaming is the only thing you do where you don't pay attention to anything else. Absolutely. If you're gaming, your phone, you don't care. Absolutely. Yeah, you know yeah. that. That's full the, focus. It's full focus. I mean, uh, even the, while watching a movie, you can deep focus. Yeah, but, but game, with game, you have so to pay it. attention. You don't pay attention, you're done. Your Absolutely. game is over. Yeah. So Tem- I mean, uh, temple run like one yeah. blink and you're done. You're yeah. done exactly. Yeah. So I mean, like that. I think is like so. No, yeah. we're gonna do. We're we'll gonna be, we get gotta, some yeah. folks on gaming, and yeah, I think we, sure. we both know a lot of folks yeah. on gaming. I absolutely. Think we're gonna we're gonna come in, but uh, yeah. just just to round it up, uh, I think we've been chatting for a while now. But I'm so happy you're here, Shubham. I mean, thanks, thanks for Sheila. And and I'm so uh, happy to be with you guys. No, and and, an awesome and we are gonna use the Nord Network yes, now we are. Uh, uh, to to get more folks here and uh, talk about a lot more deeper real insights, right? This show Absolutely. is about real insights yep. and uh, hopefully uh, real conversations with uh, people from the ecosystem hmm. and sure. uh, talking about tech and biz and startups and everything. And uh, uh, yeah, I just like to kind of remind everybody again, please yeah. uh, uh, give us ratings on iTunes, review us on iTunes, right. review us on any of the other podcasting networks, drop a comment on YouTube and we'll get back to you. And also we have a Slack channel, which is now up and running, which right. all of our listeners are welcome to join. Right. And so if you go to the website, ivmpodcast.com slash shunya1, there will be a button over there where you can request membership. Uh, you can request an invitation to the Slack channel and we'll get yeah. back to you soon. Yeah, let's, let's get chatting. Absolutely. And I think we have a few ideas around uh, uh, transcribing some of these yes. uh, conversations also, bits and pieces, putting them up. So we'll get to that. Right I think, I think number four episode is... Coming to an end here, and uh, Shubham, how do people reach you? And can you tell us a little bit about, like, what's what's in Nord for them? Like, why they should be on it? And yeah, so uh, basically, uh, uh, at Nord, uh, we are uh, building networking platform based on uh, interest areas and algorithms targeted to the top 150 million people in the world. Right. So, the top 150 million people means that uh, there are 39.3 million millionaires in the world. Obviously, obviously, the numbers will change after. Demonetization and the Chinese <laughs> numbers are not in. <laughs> there are 43.6 million educational achievers, so people who belong to the top 10 percentile of the educational institutes for any faculty in the world. Right, right, the rest right. are uh, professional achievers. Right. So what we believe is that the real uh, networking or the depth of so Facebook and LinkedIn have created their own culture, which is awesome, and they've created the width. Right. But uh, we are more uh, more of a top of the pyramid uh, uh, solution because a lot of value. According to the Pareto's principle, basically Comes gets created yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And we are uh, divided into four business verticals, but people can know more about it. They can write to me at shubham, S-H-U-B-H-A-M at nordapp.com. Right. Or And it is a buy invite only platform. So we want to ensure that people are uh, curated. So one can download the app, but only somebody you know yeah, and has an invite, uh, you can come on it. and. Yeah. 
this is how it works. Or, or you can at least uh, you get a feel of it uh, by requesting to come and one of sure, our I'm events. Can I get an invite? Sure, I'm here. Then. And, uh, <laughs> Just after this. <laughs> Shubham, Shubham does some awesome events uh, in now Bombay, Bangalore, Delhi. Uh, sure. So, so you know, uh, a lot of events which just involve, to add to it. Uh, I know, I know. There's a lot of beer on the events, but uh, <laughs> that's all good. But uh, so, no, by the way, really uh, though now we have revealed it in the media, Nord is actually stands for Networking on Drinks and Dreams. Right. <laughs> it's a fact. Right. And out of our four business verticals, Nord Outs and Nord Cops are curated uh, networking experiences. Right. So what we realized is that rather than only you know relying on user generated content, we created our own. Right. And now that's very important to seed it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And now it's become, you know... Uh, now people look forward to it. <laughs> uh, thanks to the people and, uh, you know, with God's grace, we are able to add a lot of value to people. But it's become a good business model for us. Right. So a lot of people get confused that we only do events. No, that's something that we started to survive as a survival hack. Right. But now it's become a good business model, which is synergetic to the tech platform and play. Because we right. get a lot of data and... Uh, we get a lot of uh, you know, real world interaction. I absolutely, think that's, that's absolutely what, what you're trying to do here, right? Make right. this, yeah. make this real. Make the conversation real. Yeah, make yeah. this about uh, getting some content out, which you probably may or may not ever read on a blog or an article or uh, uh, here at a panel. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, have some deep conversations and thank you. Thank you so much for your... Uh, we're going to have you back. We're going to have you back uh, for Anytime. sure. Yeah, and absolutely. Dig up more dirt about... <laughs> <laughs> lots of things. Oh, so lots of things and the is not the only company I've worked with. <laughs> there are lots of <laughs> <laughs> dirt digger. <laughs> right, right, right. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks so thanks much. Thanks for Sheila. Thanks for Amit and thanks a lot to the uh, production crew who waited yeah. for me and I got late during Bombay Rains. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> There's another right. problem to solve. How do you reach right. from A point to B There's during Bombay Rains? Trains. There's only one answer. Trains. Helicopter. Helicopter. <laughs> All right. On that note, signing off, guys. Thanks so much. And see you next week. Bye bye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Sorry to say, but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun. As you can see, there's death, destruction, and chaos taking place all around us. But don't you worry. Food and drinks will be served shortly, and I would recommend checking out IVM Podcasts to get some of your favorite Indian podcasts. We'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over. Thank you.